Coming up on episode 169 of Creative Writing, I'm talking all about pen names. I can't go back to sleep, it's almost light. These restless thoughts have kept me up again tonight. Hello and welcome to Create If Writing. I'm Kirsten Oliphant, your host, and this is the podcast for you, a writer, blogger, or creative who wants to build an online platform without being smarmy. And you may not be able to tell, but I can always tell when I take a few weeks off because when I come back, I can't quite like get the normal rhythm. I'm like a little too excited to be here tonight talking about pen names because yes, it's night. I almost always record at night, especially during the summer. So you can just picture me in a very cluttered office that's about to be renovated and it's a giant mess. It's night. It's the only time my kids are quiet. You may hear a dog barking. That's where I'm at and I'm very excited to talk about pen names. Yay! Okay, so here are a few things you need to know before we get into it. If you want the show notes, which there are going to be links, there's going to be a written version of this, not a transcript. I actually write out full blog posts. You can go to creativewriting.com slash 169. My episode's are almost always creativewriting.com slash whatever the number is. Uh, the earlier episodes have a zero in front of them. So the single digit uh, episode one is 001. And that's quite a shock if you go listen to that one. So maybe don't. Stick with me. Let's talk pen names. And if you want to get my weekly emails where I share that the link is live for the podcast and other resources, tips, and tools, you can go to creativewriting.com slash quick fix. And that's my weekly quick fix email. So pen names, this is something you guys have been asking. The summer, I usually take a little bit of time off in the summer or just get more sporadic because we have five kids ages 11 to two and a half and we're potty training. It's wild up in here. Um, But I let you guys ask questions. And one of the questions was about pen names. And that's a giant topic. Actually, I had a few people ask. And then I had a post about it in uh, the Facebook group, which if you're not in there, here's another link for you, creativewriting.com slash community. Um, We had some discussion about that and I had some more questions. So I'm going to hit the basics of pen names and give you my opinions. And I have some links to some other people. Example, Ann R. Allen has a post about why you shouldn't have pen names. And so I'm linking to that, even though I respectfully disagree. She's got some good points. Um, Yeah, so you can go (laughs) check out the blog post for links. But For me, a pen name can be really important and I want to talk about why. So a tiny bit about my personal story and use of pen names, and then I'll get into the very nitty gritty stuff that you need to know. But here's my experience with them. A year ago, I tried an experiment. I had been building an online platform, actually a couple platforms for years, uh, mostly related to my name, Kirsten Oliphant. And uh, I had kirstenoliphant.com, which is still there. You can go find Uh, a blog that is not updated, but you can find recipes to really fantastic things like a chocolate chip pumpkin cake, which is fantastic, fantastic. And some other uh, recipes, parenting posts, um, lots, there's some popular posts. I still make some money residually on there just from traffic, uh, people coming to the blog from Pinterest and Google. So I have that. And then Create If Writing is under my name, but the podcast is not the Kirsten Oliphant Show. It's Create If Writing. I wanted to use some keywords in there. Clever play on words, creative writing, create if writing. Um, The if being because I, you know, my audience is a little bit broader. I am niching down and really focusing a lot more on writers, especially indie authors who are self-publishing. However, I don't, I don't know. I'm not very good at niching down. I like too many things and have too many interests. So a year ago, I one of these interests is I decided I wanted to try to write fiction in a profitable niche that I'd never written in before. And I wanted to not use the platforms that I'd built. I had email lists of probably like 2,000 under Kirsten Oliphant and somewhere around 4,000 under creative writing. So talking about email lists, not social media following. Social media following, I have like 10,000 Twitter followers. I have a, 10,000 or something, a little bit less than that, maybe on Pinterest to have a, you know, a significant platform, but I didn't want to use that. I wanted to see if I could use the tools that I learned to actually launch uh, books without using that. And so I decided to write it under a pen name. The other reason, in addition to the experiment, which was successful, and you can actually go to, I think it's episode 150 uh, and listen to 
you know, me talking about what it was like January from 2018 to January of 2019, uh, my income <laughs> increased. And January is my biggest month, so I don't always make that much, but I've made four figures solidly for over a year now uh, under this pen name that I launched out of nowhere last year. Um, but the other reason was because under Kirsten Oliphant, I have some other books that are not related to the niche I wanted to write in. So I have some business books. I have a book called Email Lists Made Easy, which I'm about to update. Don't go buy it yet. It's still for sale because I don't want to take it down, but I'm going to update it. Um, a book called Creative Collaborations, which you can absolutely buy and is fantastic, talking about different ways that you can network with other people in non-smarmy ways. Um, and also some devotional books, which don't relate, but they're all nonfiction. So I have um, a Christmas devotional and an Easter devotional. So when I wanted to launch the pen name, I didn't want to be using those uh, same platforms. And I also wanted to have some separation in terms of people coming to Amazon and being confused as to why there's a book on email lists, a book on Christmas, and then a romance novel, because um, I'm writing under clean romance with Emma St. Clair. So those are my reasons for starting the pen name. And it was very successful for me and continues to be. And I'm actually about to launch uh, a new pen name under the name Sullivan Gray. I have a book coming out in August and then another in September and maybe more and more quickly. I'm writing pretty quickly. I'm writing with a partner, um, Courtney, who's writing under a pen name E.C. Farrell for one of the books called Supernatural Reform School. Totally different genre um, and it just needed a new pen name. So let's talk about why that is and why after doing this once, I'm doing another pen name. So if you're considering this, you can decide if this is something that's right for you or not. Okay, so why do authors write under a pen name? I gave you some examples there. The testing thing, that was just me. You're probably not gonna be testing things. I'm kind of a nerd and I like to study things. So that was like my challenge. And I actually forgot at, at some point that this was a test and then someone was reminding me, they're like, I was listening to your blog and you said you were doing a secret project. I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> that was a secret. Um, I forgot and and then just kind of came back and was talking about it. But it wasn't a secret um, because I wanted to keep it private. And, th and that's actually the first reason a lot of people do pen names. So for example, um, a lot of people, and I do hear this a lot, if you're writing steamy romance that has sex scenes, a lot of people like don't want their mom to know about that. Or I know people who might have a job working for a church or working for a, as a teacher where writing something, even if it's not steamy, um, you know, it might have some kind of content that could interfere with their public life, their job, or something else. And so that first reason is privacy and keeping those things separate for that reason. I personally don't care. You can know that I'm Kirsten and I'm Emma and I'm Sullivan. That's fine. I don't have a personal reason that keeps them private. Um, mine is more about marketing, which is the second main reason. So the first being privacy, the second one being marketing. Um, and as I mentioned, I had business books and devotionals, and then I wanted to write romance. Now, I will say that consumers are not dumb. I do not under you know any way, shape, or form think that people going to buy books are so dumb that if they see an, a book on email list and they see a romance book, they can't think, I'm just going to pick the one I want to read. <laughs> that they, they don't understand that people can write different things. And I'm not going to say either that people don't read a lot of different genres because I read a ton of different genres. However, we have a lot of sort of even subconscious things that impact our decisions when we're buying. And when you are on Amazon and you have all of these book covers and you have all of these things flashing in front of you, clarity matters. Branding matters. And I've actually got an example. If you go look in the show notes at creativewriting.com slash 169, you can see I've got two covers for Emma and two covers for Sullivan up there. And you can see at a glance that they are marketed towards different groups. Would I read both genres? Yes. Am I a weirdo? Yes. Okay, maybe you're a weirdo too. But generally speaking, and even if I'm reading those different genres, if I'm going to Amazon because I'm in the mood for a romance, I'm going to buy Emma's books. I'm not going to go buy Sullivan's books. Okay, just by glance. Subconsciously, book covers even send a signal to the brain letting you know if that's the thing you want or not. Pen names, whether it's even sometimes I've actually read uh, the research and I'm link, I link to Joanna Penn, a post she has on pen names about this, about how women will buy men or women books, typically the books by men or women. Um, men tend to buy more books by male authors. And so in some genres, people, JK Rowling, for example, will put a pen, will use a pen name that could be either gender, gender neutral or 
um, a woman might use a man's name. And this is historically a thing that happens and right or wrong. Again, we're talking about even tiny subconscious signals that are sent to our brain. So in terms of marketing, this can be really important. Um, and, and again, I, some people disagree with this and I'm linking to Anna R. Allen's post on her blog. She's very smart and has some good things to say about this. However, I have seen some people who started writing clean romance at the same time I did, who don't have um, everything, they don't they don't write just under one genre, they write under a couple genres, and it's been more of an uphill battle. It's been more of a struggle to establish that brand because there is kind of a dil diluting, I guess, of that brand and some confusion when readers go and see all these different kinds of books. It sends a mixed signal, even subconsciously. And even though you could pick and choose, Again, you're getting sent these signals to your brain and it matters. Um, when should you not use a pen name? Because I think sometimes it, it can be overkill. So I tend to um, think about this, you know, I'm in the romance genre, so it's easy for me to use those as examples. Steam level. If you're writing a book that's steamy and has uh, explicit sex scenes in them, you are not gonna wanna write under, um, you're not gonna wanna write clean romance under that same pen name. Uh, steamy readers might read both, a few clean readers might read both, but typically the readers who are reading clean romance that, that do not have sex on the page, they also don't want cussing. They do not want violence. They do not want to read um, through these explicit sex scenes. That's generally very true. And and I know this because I have, you know, heard the feedback from people, um, you know, my own readers and other things, if they find a book that might have a cuss word in it um, that's under clean romance, they get upset, okay? It's a really big deal to them. So if you're writing across, um, you know, different levels, like in terms of, of content, that can matter. Um, but if you're writing romantic comedy versus romantic suspense and the steam level is the same, those two don't necessarily have to have a separate pen name. Um, you know, yes, one's funny, one's more intense, you could, but it's going to be, you know, it's not that much work to balance a pen name, but it is more things to juggle. So if it's on that same steam level, I would say probably keep them together. And I know some authors who have done different names um, for the same level of like heat in the books, and they would say that they wish they hadn't <laughs> or don't do what I did. Um, just keep it the same if it's, you know, kind of the same. So if you're writing cowboy romances that are clean and you're also writing billionaire romances that are clean, you might want those under the same pen name. Um, is the advice I've heard from people who have done multiple pen names that are genres that are pretty similar. Some people also just don't want to do it. They don't want to be bothered and that's fine. And if you don't want to be bothered by having that other pen name and you don't want to do the work, then don't. But your sales may suffer because your brand is muddy. It's not as clear. So if you don't need a pen name because you already have a very established brand or public facing name. So like if you are someone who is a celebrity and you want to write in different genres, your people, even if they don't particularly love all those genres, they're attracted to you the name, the brand, they have that, you have that recognition, you have that power, but I would say you have to be pretty powerful. Even with my giant 10,000 Twitter followers, it's a little bit less than 10,000 now. Um, that's not a giant brand, y'all. It's just not, yeah, it took a long time to get that many um, Twitter followers, but it doesn't matter, okay? That's really not a brand. If you have a million page views on your blog every month, that is more, um, something that matters, especially if you're, you're front and center, your name is on that. Um, it's not like a blog with a lot of different contributors that has a very general name. If it's got your name, your face attached to it, if you have um, 10,000 email subscribers or more, you might be able to have enough pull in your own you know, platform that you could kind of do whatever you want. But for most people, the average person kind of starting out, you do want to think about those two pen names. If you don't care as much about branding, if you don't care as much about selling books, then don't worry about it. Um, and you just, again, if you don't think you can juggle it, then maybe don't. But if you're focused on sales and you actually want to make sales on your book and you have a smaller platform or are starting from scratch using a pen name, or if you haven't published under your own name, um, then use your own name, that's fine. But like, <laughs> if you're just, if you already have things under your own name and it's not the genre you're writing in, then you wanna consider um, having a pen name. So uh, technically speaking, 
is this a big deal to have pen names? I hear people asking a lot about LLCs and trademarks and all this stuff in the government. It's really pretty easy. So um, I don't, I can't speak for all the platforms, so I think they're pretty similar. Amazon has what's called Author Central, which is how you have kind of your author side of things taken care of as you publish through Amazon's KDP, um, their publishing arm. So when I actually have a little video, if you go to uh, creativewriting.com slash 169, where you can see this, I actually should walk you guys through. I did like a little screen share video of how easy it is once you put a book up through KDP to claim that author name and create your pen name. It's really easy, but you do have to have the book up first. So recently, when I put up the first Sullivan Gray book for pre-order, um, I put my name, I put my co-author's name, and then I went into Author Central and I claimed the book. And then I, you know, you choose the pen name. So it's really simple. And on Amazon, on the back end, everything's connected. It all goes to my same bank account. It doesn't require weird stuff, tax things. It's all in the same thing. Don't worry about that part. Um, if you want to have things way more private and you don't want to worry as much about like there being any chance of people finding out, then you may want to take some other measures. And I have a link to somebody talking about that. But generally speaking, on the back end, all my stuff's connected. On the front end, when I started putting out Sullivan Gray stuff, um, it, it's not sending out like messages or connecting it to my Kirsten stuff or my Emma stuff. So it's really not that big of a deal. Um, now, when in terms of like, platform, choosing the author platform, this is where it's a little bit more complicated and there's a little bit more work, but it still doesn't have to be that much work, y'all. So let me boil it down to the very bare bo bones of this. And honestly, this goes really well if you're trying to build an author platform in general, th these are the things I'd recommend. Basic, basic suggestions. Set up an email list. This is always my main focus and I have a million posts <laughs> about email lists. That's where you're gonna sell more books. Set up your email list. Set up a web page. Now I use I have Emma St. Clair.com for Sullivan Gray. There was already a Sullivan Gray.com that somebody owned. So I have author Sullivan Gray.com. And then you can have your author email set up through that. And that goes through your web host. And so I use SiteGround. I would highly recommend them, especially over Bluehost. A lot of people promote Bluehost, but um, they pay well, but their their service is really um yeah, my site was down all the time. So I do have an affiliate link. If you want SiteGround, creativewriting.com forward slash SiteGround. It's great the first year, it gets a little more pricey, but I have a plan where I have all my sites under one plan. So um, that's what I have. And then that lets you set up your author name. So you can email Sullivan at authorsullivangray.com. And for a lot of email lists, they require that, like MailerLite, who is someone I recommend. Um, but everybody really wants you to do that because it impacts deliverability. So set up the email list, set up your web page, and you can get that email that goes, and mine just forwards to Gmail because I know I'm not gonna go check something else. Um, I used a YouTube video to figure that out. I'm not gonna walk you through it because it's super annoying and technical. I hate that stuff. Just look on YouTube, you can figure it out. Email list, web page. Facebook page, and this is so that you can run ads if you wanna run Facebook ads. Um, your page organically, like without money, is not gonna grow a lot, it's not gonna be seen a lot, but I don't really care how many page likes I have, I just wanna be able to run ads, and so I have those pages set up. And then I would choose one social media account that you're gonna use. This could be Facebook, um, if you want to use your page, I choose Facebook groups and I use those a lot. Maybe it's Instagram for you. Maybe it's Twitter. I think Twitter can be useful. It's not um, not always, but there's some great communities on there. Could be YouTube if you have, like, there's like author tube channels and booktubers. There's all kinds of different things that you could use. Um, I do see a lot of authors using Instagram, but just pick one. You don't have to be everywhere. You don't have to do a lot of stuff. Keep it simple. I want to make one note about Facebook. Um, Facebook does not want you to have two personal profiles. And I see a lot of authors doing this. A personal profile is where you can add friends. A page is where you can ask for likes and their page has likes. Those are different things. You can have a lot of Facebook pages. Facebook wants you to have one personal profile. And a lot of authors will choose to have, um, to create a new Facebook account with a different email address and create an author profile and add friends. Now here's the problem. The, the reason they're doing this is because the organic reach for pages is really low. And organic, I just mean not paid. If you're posting on your Facebook page, very few people will see it. So people are like, well, I'll just, 
I'll just make an author profile and add people as friends. And you know, well, here's the thing is that Facebook doesn't want you to do that. It's against the terms of service and you can lose your full Facebook account. You won't have a Facebook account. You can't have groups. You can't run ads. You're gone. Um, and I don't know personally, but I have seen people that this has happened to where they lost everything. So um, you don't want to do that. So don't create another Facebook profile. Create a page to run ads through it in case you want to run ads. Um, so again, can be simple. Doesn't have to be that lot. Email list, web page, and I don't even have a blog necessarily or a fully set up web page. Sullivan Gray, if you go there um, to authorsullivangray.com, you're just going to find an email sign up, like a, a landing page where you can sign up for my email list. No real information other than here's my book, buy it. I'm not planning to have a blog. Um, Emma St. Clair has a tiny blog with like three blog posts. I'm not really blogging. No one comes to my site. That's not where they're buying my books. They're buying them on Amazon. So just keep it simple. If you need to have a blog, if you're doing nonfiction books, a blog can be fantastic. So it really just depends on what you're doing, but you don't have to have a giant website and pay a developer or anything else. You can be very basic and have a landing page from your email service provider. So MailerLite, um, I created a landing page and then I had, um, you know, I went into my hosting at SiteGround and had uh, the authorsullivangray.com point to the landing page on email. Again, I'm not going to walk you through the technical stuff, y'all. That's not what I'm here for. Go to YouTube. They'll show you how it's really like took five minutes. Um, so some other questions I want to hit, uh, how to choose a pen name. I do hear people asking that. Um, I mentioned before the thing about um, gender that that men tend to buy more books with male author names. So a lot of female authors, if they want um, to reach more, will use a gender neutral or a male name. Totally up to you if that's something that you want to do, or if you want to just say, no, I'm not doing that. Um, that can be a consideration. Here's how I chose mine. Um, when I was doing Clean Romance, uh, St. Clair is my maiden name. So I was like, I want to use that. Even though I should have realized that anytime you have a period um, or punctuation mark of some kind in your name, it can be annoying. It hasn't been a big deal, but I don't know why I wasn't thinking about that because it's S-T period C-L-A-I-R. Amazon hasn't had a problem, but like every time I opened an account for my whole life, like they could never find it because it was either under S-T or S. A, even though there's no A in it, they're like Saint, S-A-I-N-T, or just C for Claire. They'd skip the Saint altogether. Anyway, whatever. I wanted my last name. I put it in there. And then Emma is one of those really friendly, cheerful names. Everybody loves Emma. You can't hate Emma. And that just seemed like a perfect, sweet romance author name. For the young adult, I wanted something a little bit edgier because the books are a little bit edgier. Um, and Sullivan was a name that we had talked about for our fifth daughter, uh, we really like the idea. We have a lot of last names as first names. We have um, a Cooper who's a daughter. It's usually a boy name and also it's usually a last name. Uh, Sullivan was one we thought was really cute. Sully would be a great nickname. We ended up going with Piper instead. But I still loved Sullivan and I think it's one of those that can be gender neutral. It's a name I love. It's a little bit edgier and cool, but not too weird. Um, and I just liked the sound of Sullivan Gray. I just thought that that sounded like a cool, edgy name that fit. That's my process. I do have a post I'm linking to from Dave Chesson of Kindlepreneur on how to choose your pen name. And so he has some more information, but you don't have to go crazy on that. Um, and then in terms of creating a whole pretend person, this is a really interesting question. So I'm gonna tell you what I do in this. So do you have to create like a fake person? So one of the dangers with this, and Anna Allen, who I've referenced her several times in this episode, um, has this blog post where she talks about this as well. It's the same post I'm linking to about why you shouldn't create a pen name. Again, I disagree, but she has a point in there that the things in the digital world, like it's really hard to keep anything private. So that's a good thing to know if you're really trying to keep that pen name secret. Um, sometimes it comes out. I have a friend who publishes two different things she wants separate and the other night she published at night and put her book up for sale under the wrong pen name. That can happen. So like, it, you know, you get tired, you make a mistake. So just realize that the secrets come to light often. Um, so keep that in mind when you're creating like a whole fake person. That felt weird to me. So what I have done is I have more personas. Um, if you think about yourself, you we all really have multiple facets to our personality, okay? I like a lot of different things. I've told you guys this. I, I don't niche down well because I have so many different interests. So when I'm writing emails from Emma and I'm creating content and writing a bio for Emma, I'm focusing on the part of myself that likes the things 
that a clean romance reader would like. I don't talk about how much I love sarcasm. Well, not too much anyway. I don't talk about the fact that I also love horror movies because a lot of clean romance readers don't and would be very turned off if I said that It was one of my favorite books. Okay, so I don't talk about that, but I do love the book It by Stephen King. Um, The movie was great too, the first one, uh, the TV, anyway, you know, so there you go. See, I'm not going to do that this time. I'm not going to write an email talking about how I like clean romance and also I like It. My clean romance readers are not going to go there with me. So I am focused on the facets of my personality that would most reach those readers. Is it fake? No, because I believe the things I'm saying there, but that's just not the whole picture of who I am. Same thing with Sullivan as I'm creating um, a persona for young adult. I'm going to be sharing books in my email that relate to uh, Sullivan's books, that relate to books that readers who like Sullivan's books are going to like. I'm not going to be talking about clean romance in there because it's a different readership. Uh, It doesn't mean that somebody's not going to read both. Again, I do. However, um, when I'm creating content and creating the branding around each of those pen names, the content I'm creating and pushing out relates to what I want to sell. And it allows you, and again, here's that whole really clear branding thing. It allows you, it allows me to be super clear, to be super focused, and to only use things that are going to relate to my end goal, which is to sell the kind of books that pen name is writing. And that's it. So for me, it's not a fake person. It's a persona. It's just a facet of myself. And I'm only focusing really on the facet of myself that relates to those books I want to sell when I'm writing emails or creating content for that pen name. So I hope that makes sense. So it doesn't feel fake to me. Other people might handle it differently. Um, that is just what feels right to me. In terms of images and and like a biopic, you could use whatever picture you want to use. Maybe it's your real face. A lot of times people aren't going to track you down all over the internet. They don't care. Um, or um, I do link in the show notes to someone on Fiverr who you can give them a photograph and they'll make a little cartoon avatar of yourself. Um, I did that in the cartoon avatar. I really like it. It sort of looks like me, but not really. And I have that for Emma. Um, and that's something, you know, you could also look to see what the other pen names are using for their images. Maybe it's, you just have a picture of you, but it's a different picture. Maybe you're more serious. Maybe you're more silly. It just depends on what you want. And if you're being private, obviously you don't want a picture that looks like you at all. Sometimes people use, um, you know, a book cover or they'll get a brand logo created so they don't actually have a picture of themselves. I do think readers like to see the author. I think they get curious, especially if they like a book and they want to get more invested. So I do think it's a good idea to have some kind of picture of a person, not just a book cover or a logo. Um, But it's up to you and it depends again on that level of privacy. So overall, um, when you're thinking about a pen name, I would say to think about your ultimate goals. If you don't care about making money, then do whatever you want to do. If your goal is to make money, I think that pen names can be a very helpful way to be super, ultra, incredibly clear about your marketing and branding and that it does and can matter. And it does not have to be super involved. You can do those four things, set up an email list, set up the website, set up a Facebook page if you plan to run ads, and then one social media account. And if you're using just Facebook, then hey, that's not another account. Um, And again, don't forget the caveat about not creating another personal profile on Facebook. Um, So those are the basics of pin names. There are some other questions and concerns that people might have, but this is the the basic rundown. And I don't know everything about this. Um, you know, one day I might put everything under the umbrella of Kirsten Oliphant and my because my brand is so enormous, but right now it's it's really not. And 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 I'm starting out almost like from scratch with these pen names and that's fine. And it's totally possible to start from scratch with a pen name and be profitable a year later. So it is absolutely okay. And I think and I, I venture to say that my brand is more profitable because I chose a pen name. And I'm saying that based on the fact that um, I do know people who tried to kind of write in a bunch of different genres and it has not worked super well for them. And I think it's because of clarity. I think that clarity matters, that at a glance, people make snap judgments. They don't even know why sometimes. Again, a lot of it's subconscious, but that pen name creates the clarity. Okay. You might have more questions. That's great. We can talk about this in the Facebook community, creativefinding.com slash 
community. You can sign up for my email list if you want to get weekly emails from me. Summertime, it's not always weekly, but you can get weekly emails from me with tools, resources, tips, and more creativewriting.com slash quick fix. I do try to keep you guys updated on news and things that are changing or things that you might need to know about in terms of social media updates and all those kinds of things. So if you don't feel like keeping up with all that yourself, come to me. I'll help keep you updated on that. A big thank you to Jasmine Commerce of jasminecommercemusic.com for the amazing tunes, original tunes, indie tunes that she has contributed to the show that you're listening to right now. Whether this is your first or 169th time listening to the podcast, I am so glad that you are here and listening. Thank you so much. Now it's time for you to go out and create content that you love and serve your people well.